Welcome to Cranfield University and the Centre for Life Cycle Engineering and Management. My name is Andrew Starr and welcome to join us at the Railway Innovation and Test Area here at Cranfield, which we call RUTA for short. Here's where we undertake lots of our collaborations with Network Rail and partners and we're going to introduce you today to one of our robot vehicles. We've done a series of uh, demonstrators. Um, before we start, I'd like to remind the audience to pose any questions to us in the chat on the video. And at this stage, I'm going to hand over to Mifta, who is going to introduce the demonstration. Thank you everyone for joining with us today at this Robot Lab Live. And now I'm going to introduce you the robot. So our system is called RIRS, Railway Inspection and Repair System. It consists of three parts, a trolley, a Warthog UGV, and a UR10E manipulator. So let's tell you a bit about our purpose. So the purpose of our research is to create a command and control center for a railway inspection and repair robot. So what the robot will do? The robot will run along the track in a find, uh, looking for a defect. And once it finds a defect, it will stop. In our demo, we will not going to find a real defect, but we will use a QR code which will represent the defect. So let me tell you about the sequence. When the robot starts from the base, it will tell the arm to go into inspection pose. Once the arm goes into the inspection pose, the robot will travel along the track. And once it finds a defect, it will stop and it will do some repair motion. We are not going to do any actual repair, but we are going to do some actuation to mimic the repair task. And the robots are capable of finding different types of QR code and doing different types of actuation. Now I'm going to hand over to Jian and Peyang to show you the actual demonstration and the robot in action. Uh, thank you, Mifta. This is Peyang. We are going to show the first round of the demonstration. We can see the robot is standby on the track and ready for the running. From now on, the following squeeze is fully autonomous. It's adjusting the robot arm to show the camera can see the sleepers and the rears. It starts moving automatically along the track. During the movement, the camera at the arm tip is scanning and capturing the images of the sleepers. We can see the robot is approaching to our preset QR code. Yeah, it found the QR code, so it stopped. We can see the robot is uh, moving, moving its camera to capture the images from the different uh, angles. Now the sequence is finished. Hand over to Mifta. Hello everyone, this is still real live. Keep your comments coming. Uh, I'll be explaining, I'm Ade, I'm a researcher at Cranfield University. Uh, I'll be explaining some of the components we have on board this uh, Warthog. Uh, it's an autonomous vehicle for railway inspection. And of course, for it to function properly, we need to have uh, sensors uh, on board. And we have some certain algorithms that are programmed by our seasoned researchers at Cranfield to achieve this purpose. Uh, first of all, we have the 
GPS for localization. This takes coordinates of the location where we are using the Earth components and the satellites, and then it can tell us the pinpoint with uh, one meter accuracy where the aircraft, I mean, where the robot is. So it can tell us the geopositions of the robot, and all this uh, information are sent into the ROS2, a uh, ROS1 computer. So the computer on board is uh, controlled uh, on algorithm on ROS1, and I'll be handing over to Mesume to explain more on the geoposition. Uh, geo Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Masuma Rahimi. I'm a PhD student at Cranfield University at the Center of Life Cycle Engineering and Management. My research is about developing and implementing autonomous localization and navigation for the robotic inspection and repair system. The main component of this robot is Vorta from ClearPath Company. This robot has a number of sensors, such as RTK GPS, 3D LiDAR, RGBD camera, and an IMU and a wheel odometer. As this robot is considered to operate on the railway track, localization is highly important. For localization, we mostly apply GPS sensor, but GPS is not working properly in railway environment because of different reasons, such as tunnels, dense vegetation, unavailability of the satellites, and many other reasons. So in this case, we try to fuse sensor for vehicle localization and apply track site objects as references for improving vehicle positioning. Next, we will, I will show a couple of videos in order to relate it to the on-track vehicle localization and navigation and off-track autonomous vehicle localization and navigation. This uh, test uh, is divided in two separate phases. The first phase, it is supposed that uh, we have GPS. The vehicle starts moving in order to reach to the goal location. And uh, in RVs, you can see that uh, localization and mapping are running through our tab map. And in RVs also, we can see a graph base uh, that are uh, generated from the R tab map. In the related terminal, we can see that the GPS location has been uh, reached. In the second uh, scenario, suppose that we do not have any GPS. So this is the case that the vehicle, in order, to, the vehicle need to uh, identify where and when to stop in order to identify the defect location. Here, the vehicle starts moving and, and use the track site object as a reference point in order to specify the environments around the defect location and also improve the vehicle's location. Here we can see that uh, by detecting the distance from the nearby uh, objects, uh, it starts publishing, and when it reaches to the defect location, it will the vehicle will stop. Thank you, Mesume. That's uh, the demonstration on the GPS localization. Uh, keep your comments coming in. It's still real live at Cranfield University. Uh, now I'll be handing over to Gian to explain more on obstacle avoidance. Uh, before that, uh, the LiDAR, which you see on the robot, is, uh, it, it's, it's, a, it's a device that sends signals around the environment, and this bounces back and sends some algorithms into the ROS1 computer. And this is programmed with the uh, ROS1 algorithm to sense obstacles within the environment. Uh, Jian will clearly explain that for his demonstration. Hand over to you, Jian. Hello, everyone at RoboLife. I'm Jen Lee. I work on the software development for this robot. This is our latest railway robots and automated bench trolley. Uh, it has similar feature as uh, the Warthog robot we talked about before. The main difference is it's railway, uh, railway ready. It has the wheels ready to go on the railway track without any conversion. Today, I'm going to show you an example of collision avoidance with the LiDAR sensor. Our LiDAR works by sending beams 360 degree to the surrounding uh, environment up to 200 meters. Uh, so it can have a clear view of what's around you. Today's demo, uh, the robot will travel to the end by detecting this obstacle, which is the fake policeman, and eventually slow down. Uh, it will continue uh, moving when the obstacle is cleared until it reach the end. Now the robot start moving. Now the robot detects the obstacle and uh, stop. 
the robot will stop unless the track is clear. Now we clear the uh, obstacle, the robot continue moving. Hello, real life. This is Jian at Rita. Now I will repeat this job sequence again. But this time I'll show you the view from the camera on the robot arm. So you'll see what the robot see. Now let's start the sequence. Now you can see the robot arm is getting ready to position itself to the side of the track. So it's looking for the QR code. Robot start moving. Now I'll hand over to Fei Yang. Thank you, Jian. Uh, this time you can see the camera view during the test. So it's worth to mention that today's autonomous test is just a simulation. In real environment, the QR code might be the track defeats. So the robot arm can be replaced by ultrasound testing equipment or any other maintenance kits. So the robot can do the inspection and the maintenance works autonomously. The robot is approaching to the preset QR code now. Yeah, it uh, detected the QR code again. And in camera view, you can see the QR code so the robot stopped here, turning its arm. Okay, our test sequence is finished now. Before I go to the conclusion, I like to thank you everyone again for watching our demo, and don't forget to ask any question in our comment section. So what we have seen, a demonstration of autonomous railway inspection using a mobile manipulator. We can use this mobile manipulator to improve the safety for the inspection task in the railway. We all know railway environment is a bit harsh. Sometimes the operator has to work in harsh environment, in rain, in snow. But if we can use the robot for inspection, it can make the inspection task safer and much more efficient. So this demonstration we have seen in RITA in a small scale, but we have also demonstrated this in Northampton and Lamport Railway, Heritage Railway, which is like a real railway environment. And we have achieved the same results. And in the, in the future, we can use this command and control center for the other robot, and we can improve the inspection system for the railway operator. Thank you for watching our demo. I would like to request you to ask any question you have. So we have got a question. The question is, how does the robot defect, detect the railway defect? So we have a monocular camera in front of the arm. And when the robot moves along the railway track, the arm is actually looking for defect. So we use a computer vision system. Uh, it's called VISP Auto Tracker to detect the QR code, which is actually mimicking the inspection for finding a defect. Yeah, in, in real life, uh, in real time, it can actually find the defect. And in real life, we can use machine learning in the future to find a real defect type. Don't forget to ask your question in the comment. And thank you for watching our demo. Uh, we have got another question. Is the robot arm long enough 
to inspect underneath the rail. Well, unfortunately, the current version we have, the UR10 manipulator has a maximum reach of 1.2 meter. And we have used a trolley, so it lifts the robot a bit up. So it cannot check underneath the rail. But in future, if we can change the manipulator with a longer reach, we can actually use the same system, our same command and control system to inspect underneath the rail. Thank you, Cloud Coppola, for your comment and for your question. Thank you. Thank you for watching our demo. Don't forget to come again. We will have run this demo again after 30 minutes. Thank you.
after our demonstration of rail equipment. You find us here at our Railway Innovation and Test Area, which we call RITA for short, and we're going to show you some of the work that we have done in collaboration with our partners, Network Rail, and uh, an industry uh, partnership. Today, we're going to introduce you in particular to one of our robot vehicles, which is equipped uh, for robot inspection and repair. And this is one of a series of we've built with our partners as part of the Shift Rail program. I'd like to remind the audience to post their questions in the chat, please. And at this point, I'm now going to hand over to Nifta, who's going to introduce to you our demonstration. Hello, everyone. My name is Mifta, and I'm a PhD student at Cranfield University. I will introduce you to the robot, and thank you for joining for the demo. So our robot has three parts in total. The first is a trolley. It's a, and then we also have a Warthog UGV. It's from ClearPath Robotics. Then we also have a UR10E manipulator, which is attached in front of the robot. The robot are equipped with many sensors. We have GPS, we have a LiDAR, and inside the robot we have a computer, IMU, and wheel encoder. Let's talk about the purpose of our demo. So the purpose of this research is to create a command and control center for finding the railway in defect. And you, we all know that railway environment is very harsh and it can sometimes create fatigue to the human then the robotic inspection system can improve the inspection system and then help human to make it more safer. So our robot uh, have pneumatic wheel to make it run on the railway track. We have designed the trolley, which has actual railway wheel, small a 10 inch wheel. And the power is transferred from the robot to the wheel through some ruler and belt and pulley mechanism. Now I will hand over to Peyang and Jian to demonstrate the actual robot action. Thank you, Mifta. Uh, this is Feiyang. Uh, we are going to show the first round of the demonstration. We can see the robot is standby on the track and ready for running. So from now on, the following sequence is fully autonomous. It's adjusting the robot arm to make sure the camera can see the slips, slips and uh, rears. It starts moving automatically along the track. During the movement, the camera at the arm tip is scanning and capturing the images of the sleepers. We can see the robot is approaching to our preset QR code. It found the QR code, so it stopped. It's turning the robot arm so the camera can take pictures of the QR code from different angles. Now the whole sequence is finished. Hand over to Adi. He will introduce more details. Hello, everyone. This is Real Life at Cranfield University. We are Rita. Keep your comments coming in. Uh, I'll be talking more about the sensors we have on board and the algorithm we have that controls all the sensors. Actually, all the sensors are controlled by the controller which is a ROS2 component, a ROS1 component, sorry. And uh, 
we will be demonstrating how the GPS localization is able to map the geoposition ge ge of the robot using that to navigate autonomously from one position to another. I'll hand over to my colleague Mezume, which is going to demonstrate how the GPS localization works on the Warthog. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Masuma Rahimi. I'm a PhD student at Cranfield University at the Center of Life Cycle Engineering and Management. My research is about developing and implementing autonomous localization and navigation for the robotic inspection and repair system. The main component of this robot is Warthog from ClearPath Company. This robot has a number of sensors, such as RTK GPS, 3D LiDAR, RGBD camera, and an IMU and EVIL odometer. As this robot is considered to operate on the railway track, localization is highly important. For localization, we mostly apply GPS sensor, but GPS is not working properly in railway environment because of different reasons, such as tunnels, dense vegetation, unavailability of the satellites, and many other reasons. So in this case, we try to fuse sensor for vehicle localization and apply track site objects as references for improving vehicle positioning. Next, we will, I will show a couple of video in order to relate it to the on-track vehicle localization and navigation and off-track autonomous vehicle localization and navigation. This uh, test uh, is divided in two separate phases. The first phase, it is supposed that uh, we have GPS. The vehicle starts moving in order to reach to the goal location. And uh, in RVs, you can see that uh, localization and mapping are running through our tab map. And in RVs also, we can see a graph base uh, that are uh, generated from the R tab map. In the related terminal, we can see that the GPS location has been uh, reached. In the second uh, scenario, suppose that we do not have any GPS. So this is the case that the vehicle, in order to, the vehicle need to uh, identify where and when to stop in order to identify the defect location. Here, the vehicle starts moving and, and use the track site object as a reference point in order to specify the environments around the defect location and also improve the vehicle's location. Here we can see that uh, by detecting the distance from the nearby uh, objects, uh, it starts publishing, and when it reaches to the defect location, it will the vehicle would stop. Yes, uh, thank you, Mesume, for that uh, beautiful demonstration. It's still real live at Cranfield University, and uh, keep your comments coming in. Uh, furthermore, we'll be talking more on the LiDAR. The LiDAR sensor sends beams of signals of laser beams along the environment as the robot moves. And this picks uh, obstacles or senses obstacles, relates via messages to the ROS1 computer. And with that, the computer uses the algorithm to process uh, and determine to stop the robot and continue after the obstacle is cleared. I'll be handing over to Gian to do some demonstration on this with a new advanced uh, autonomous vehicle. Thank you, Gian. Hello, everyone at RoboLife. I'm Jian Li. I work on the software development for this robot. This is our latest railway robots and automated bands trolling. Uh, it has similar feature as uh, the Warthog robot we talked about before. The main difference is it's railway, uh, railway ready. It has the wheels ready to go on the railway track without any conversion. Today, I'm going to show you an example of collision avoidance with the LiDAR sensor. Our LiDAR works by sending beams 360 degree to the surrounding uh, environment up to 200 meters. Uh, so it can have a clear view of what's around you. Today's demo, uh, the robot will travel to the end by detecting this obstacle, which is the fake policeman, and eventually slow down. Uh, it will continue uh, moving when the obstacle is cleared until it reaches the end. Now the robot starts moving. Now the robot detects the obstacle and uh, stop. The robot will stop unless the track is clear. Now we clear the uh, obstacle. The robot 
continue moving. Hello, Robert Live. This is Jen again at our Railway Test Innovation Test Area, Rita. This time I'll repeat our job sequence I did minutes ago, but this time I will show the camera view from the uh, camera on the robot arm so you all can see what does the robot see. Now let's start the sequence. Now the robot arm is getting itself ready to the crack position to the side of the track. Look for QR code. Now the robot ready. Let's hand over to our colleague, Fei Yang. Thank you, Jian. Uh, this time you can see the camera view during the test. So it's true what's mentioned, it's what's true mentioned today. Uh, autonomous test is just a simulation. In real environment, the QR code might be a track defeat. The robot arm can be replaced by ultrasound testing equipment or any other maintenance kits. So the robot can do the inspection and the maintenance works autonomously. We can see the robot has already, oh no, it's approaching to the QR code. Yeah, it's it stopped because it it detected the QR code. In camera in camera view, you can see the QR code. So the robot turning its arm to take some pictures for the QR code from different angles. Our, te our test uh, sequence is uh, finished now. Thank you everyone for watching our demo and thank you all of our teammates and colleagues for enabling the demo. And please keep posting your question in the comments section. Don't forget to ask any question if you have. So we have today seen a successful demonstration of railway inspection and repair robot. We all know railway is a hazardous environment. Sometimes people have to work in rain, in uh, humid weather, in snow, but these robotic inspection and repair system can improve the safety of their work life and also it can improve the efficiency. This is a real life uh, impact of our demonstration. So we have seen a demonstration today in RIPA at a small scale, but we have also demonstrated the same thing at a real railway environment at Northampton and Lamport Railway, Heritage Railway. So this is exactly the real railway environment. And we have achieved the same results and successfully we have shown this robot is capable of TRL7. So it has achieved technology readiness level seven. Also, I want to mention about another demo. Though we have used a computer vision system to find the defect, in another demo, we have also used a ultrasonic sensor which can find real railway defects. So in the future, our robotic system can be replicated in the railway environment and we can have a improved railway inspection system. Thank you, everyone. I want to thank you again. And please keep posting your questions in the comment section. Well, we have um, a number of questions. And uh, the first one is, what challenges are there in deploying this robot on a real railway? But on a, a real railway, you need to gain access, first of all. And uh, the road rail access points uh, tend to be at strategic points on the railway so that a, a vehicle can enter that. And in, th in this case, it needs uh, a truck or a van to get it there as well. 
uh, as it goes on to the railway, it means permission to be there. And the nature of the permission is at the moment a complete closure of the railway, which is called possession. And uh, whilst that sounds extreme, actually there's time to do that uh, every night between the last train at night and the first train in the morning. When the vehicle is on the railway, then we need to understand uh, where it is at all times and for it to be as autonomous as possible, helping people out uh, to, to reduce their exp exposure to risk. And one of those particular challenges is that we think of GPS location and navigation as being universal, but in fact, GPS doesn't work for a number of clear locations. Uh, one of those is in tunnels, another underneath the canopies of, of railways. Indeed, anything with a Faraday cage, that, that is with uh, wires above the, uh, the railway, and uh, also uh, it gets interfered with by electromagnetic uh, interference like sparks. So uh, navigation really needs a number of different inputs and one of our team has worked extensively to build up the capability in location and navigation using other inputs. And that includes the other sensors that we have described, but also recognition of features on the railway, uh, things like uh, the, uh, the masts for the OHAD electrics, the signals and other immovable objects like switch boxes alongside the railway. On average, there's one of those every 30 meters or so, so that gives fixed references. And there's a lot of work going on to use those in addition to other measurement devices. So that gives you some of the idea of the uh, technical challenges. So moving on to our next question. Is there research ongoing to have an additional manipulator to repair the defects as well as defect detection? On this uh, particular vehicle, we've concentrated on uh, inspection and simulated repair. There are other vehicles on the railway which aim at uh, some very specific repairs. So for example, there's a, a machine which can cut out parts of the head of the rail and weld in new material and then uh, grind it back to the rail section. That was uh, not one of our machines, but uh, one of our uh, colleagues in the railway industry has, uh, has produced that machine. And uh, a number of uh, specific repairs for devices. And you can see that um, manipulators like robot arms are general purpose manipulators. And in the research and development stage, we tend to choose devices that can be used for lots of different purposes. So we've simulated component handling and tool handling um, for more specific uh, purposes uh, in the future. I think we also need to recognize that uh, railways use really heavy and strong components. So vehicles in the future could be significantly larger than this one, but uh, actually there's a number of shortcuts there because road rail vehicles are already things like diggers and cranes and they handle tools which weigh hundreds of kilograms to do really heavy jobs which already assist the manual workers through lots of different uh, handling of, of automation and uh, use of uh, ways that can, can help people to do heavy jobs faster and safer. So a further question, uh, what happens when there's a train coming during the robot use? So at the moment, uh, we only use robots when there are no trains on the track. And there has to be um, some very specific rules here to be able to use robots or, or other um, maintenance vehicles in between trains. So broadly, there are full-size maintenance trains which can uh, run between uh, passenger or freight service trains. And uh, road rail access um, for uh, road rail vehicles um, requires usually some closure of the railway. So it's unlikely that uh, any robot vehicle will come into in interaction with a, a normal train at the moment. 
but we are considering how future rule book changes could include the nature of um, green zone working. Uh, green zone working means that there's no dangerous vehicles around, no, no trains to, to work around. But for most of history, red zone work has been done by people. And uh, that is carefully avoided today because it's so risky for people. There are fast moving vehicles and, and heavy jobs. So we try and make sure those don't happen at the same time. But for unmanned vehicles, that's a possibility for um, robot vehicles to work in between trains. So a major challenge that we're starting to address now is how such vehicles interact with the signaling system so that they can request time in between trains uh, in order to do jobs in the so-called red zone. But that's for the, for the future. That's, that's going to take some years to develop. Another question, uh, is it uh, safety for the robot car to load on the trolley? So um, the, the, um, the robot vehicle that we use um, is manually driven onto its trolley. So that is uh, an expert operator um, uses the, uh, the, the vehicle uh, and it's remote controlled. Um, uh, you can uh, imagine just how a, uh, a um, radio controlled toy operates. This is a, a really big radio controlled toy. And uh, so we make sure that uh, the trolley is in a secure position. Uh, then the expert drives it onto the trolley and uh, it has to be um, quite securely wedged in place in order to do that because this vehicle can move very fast, it's very agile, and uh, it can climb up the uh, ramps that we use loaded on the trolley. Once it's on board the trolley, then we, uh, we lash it in place. As we move to new vehicles, um, we now have a lighter vehicle that's uh, on display at Rail Live this week, the industry exhibition. And uh, you, you can find uh, other videos of that uh, on our YouTube channel. And that is a much lighter vehicle that breaks into parts where two people can carry the parts and assemble it uh, on site. So we no longer need to load the unmanned ground vehicle, in this case, the Warthog, onto its uh, trolley. So that makes the whole procedure even more safe. We have another question about QR codes, and I'm going to hand over to Mifta. Thank you, Andrew, and thank you, everyone, for the questions. So we have got a new questions. What is the fastest speed of the trolley when detecting the QR code? Uh, OK, the maximum or the fastest speed we are running is 0 0.5 meter per second. It seems very slow when we hear it, but we have a 20 meter track, so we don't want to overrun and run it very fast. And also if we stop it from its first speed, it will have a big vibration. So we don't want that because this is a converted machine on a trolley. But in the future, if we can improve the computer vision system using machine learning. And we also have a concrete vehicle rather than uh, a trolley, we can increase the speed. We have got another question. What is the range of the small car? Uh, well, in terms of range, we cannot say any specific number. The range mainly depends on the battery. We all know in robotics, battery is a big problem for any mobile robots. So our Warthog can actually run for four to four, four to five hours on the latest acid battery. And also we have a new demonstrator bench trolley, which we have uh, made it uh, made some automation. And that one also depends, the range depends on the battery. But the LiDAR have a range of 100 meter. And in both the robot, 
both the Benz trolley and the Warthog have an emergency stop so that in any case we can use it for a safe operation. And the maximum range for this emergency stop is 50 meter for Warthog and 200 meter for Benz trolley. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. We will see you after the break. Welcome to Cranfield University and our Railway Innovation Test Area, which we call RETA for short. My name's Andrew Starr. We're from the Center for Life Cycle Engineering and Management here at Cranfield. 
We're going to introduce you to some of our railway test vehicles, which we've built in cooperation with our partners at Network Rail. And we, this is part of a series of experimental vehicles that we have produced for automatically searching uh, for, for uh, faults on the railway and uh, doing simulated repairs. I'd like to remind everybody on the um, broadcast to post their questions in the chat. And uh, now I'm going to hand over to Mifta, who's going to give you an introduction to the demonstration. Thank you everyone for watching our demo and don't forget to ask question in the comment section. So the purpose of our research is to create a command and control center for a railway inspection and repair system. So our system is called robotic inspection and repair system. It consists of three things, a trolley, which we have designed and then fabricated. Then we have a Warthog UGV from ClearPath. And we also have a UR10E manipulator from Universal Robots. The whole system has multiple sensors. We have GPS, LiDAR, environment camera. Also, we have a camera in front of the arm, which will look for defect. And inside the Warthog UGV, we have a computer, which is running ROS1 and also a IMU and wheel encoder for localization. So the robot we have is not uh, enabled for railway because it has a pneumatic wheel. So we have designed the trolley which has 10 inch railway wheel so that the robot can run on the railway track. So the power is transformed from robot to trolley using belt and pulley mechanism. Now I will hand over to Jian and Feiyang to show you the robot in actual demonstration. Thank you, Mifta. This is Feiyang. We are going to show the first round of the demonstration. So we can see the robot is standby on the track and ready for running. From now on, the following sequence is fully autonomous. It's adjusting the robot arm to make sure the camera can see the sleepers and rears, and it starts moving autonomously along the track. During the movement, the camera at the arm tip is scanning and capturing the images of the sleepers. We can see the robot is approaching to our preset QR code. It found the QR code, so it stopped. Then the robot is turning its robot arm. So the camera can take pictures for the QR code from different angles. Now the whole sequence is finished. Hand over to Addy. He will introduce more details. Hello everyone, good afternoon. I'm Ade. This is uh, real live at Cranfield University, real innovation test area. Keep your comments coming in. Uh, today I'll be talking more about the sensors we have on board. As uh, my colleague Mifta already explained earlier, we've got uh, GPS uh, that senses the localization data of the positions of the robot. We've got the LiDAR that sends beams of laser, be laser signals around the environment. This bounces back and are collected as data for the uh, robot to process. We've got environmental camera that uh, 
views the environment and using some algorithms can send signals and pick uh, data and information from the environment. We've also got a depth camera for just backup and to sense uh, closer objects. So I'll be talking uh, first about the GPS location. So the GPS uh, sensor uh, uses satellite uh, uh, data to position the robot on the lat and long coordinates. And this uh, really helps the robot to navigate from start position to end position. We've got algorithms on the robot that tells it how to move and what distance it moves. And this is processed in the ROS computer. I'll be, uh, I'll be inviting my colleague, uh, uh, Mezume, to explain more about the GPS localization. Thank you very much. Hi, everyone. My name is Masuma Rahimi. I'm a PhD student at Cranfield University at the Center of Life Cycle Engineering and Management. My research is about developing and implementing autonomous localization and navigation for the robotic inspection and repair system. The main component of this robot is Varta from ClearPath Company. This robot has a number of sensors, such as RTK GPS, 3D LiDAR, RGBD camera, and an IMU and AVIL odometer. As this robot is considered to operate on the railway track, localization is highly important. For localization, we mostly apply GPS sensor, but GPS is not working properly in railway environment because of different reasons, such as tunnels, dense vegetation, unavailability of the satellites, and many other reasons. So in this case, we try to fuse sensor for vehicle localization and apply trackside objects as references for improving vehicle positioning. Next, we will, I will show a couple of video in order to relate it to the on-track vehicle localization and navigation and off-track autonomous vehicle localization and navigation. This uh, test uh, is divided in two separate phases. The first phase, it is supposed that uh, we have GPS. The vehicle starts moving in order to reach to the goal location. And uh, in RVs, you can see that uh, localization and mapping are running through our tab map. And in RVs also, we can see a graph base uh, that are uh, generated from the R tab map. In the related terminal, we can see that the GPS location has been uh, reached. In the second uh, scenario, suppose that we do not have any GPS. So this is the case that the vehicle, in order to, the vehicle need to uh, identify where and when to stop in order to identify the defect location. Here, the vehicle starts moving and, and use the track site object as a reference point in order to specify the environments around the defect location and also improve the vehicle's location. Here we can see that uh, by detecting the distance from the nearby uh, objects, uh, it starts publishing, and when it reaches to the defect location, it will the vehicle would stop. Welcome back from that demonstration from Mezume. Uh, we're still at Robot Live. Keep your comments coming in. Uh, now we'll be talking about obstacles. Uh, we expect the robot because it works autonomously to detect obstacles, and that should be done yeah, autonomously. Uh, in doing that, uh, we have the sensor, which is a LiDAR. Uh, the LiDAR simply sends beams of signals, 360 degrees, and uh, around the robot. As the robot moves, it right, senses yeah. obstacles, uh, which, is, which are in form of uh, barriers, no. and bounces back the laser beams. And this uh, uses the algorithm on the robot's computer to tell the robot that you need to stop. Yeah. Uh, currently, the robot is ro uh, running on ROS1, but we have no from after an advanced the, robot uh, is more capable. Show the video. Uh, and built on ROS2, that's the advanced trolley. Uh, and uh, I'll be sending across to Gian, who would speak more on uh, obstacle avoidance. Thank you. Hello, everyone at RoboLife. I'm Jen Lee. I work on the software development for this robot. This is our latest railway robots and automated bands trolley. Uh, it has similar feature as uh, the Warthog robot we talked about before. The main difference is it's railway, uh, railway ready. It has the wheels ready to go on the railway track without any conversion. Today, I'm going to show you an example of collision avoidance with the LiDAR sensor. Our LiDAR works by sending beams 360 degree to the surrounding uh, environment up to 200 meter. 
uh, so it can have a clear view of what's around you. Today's demo, uh, the robot will travel to the end by detecting this obstacle, which is the fake policeman, and eventually slow down. Uh, it will continue uh, moving when the obstacle is cleared until it reach the end. Now the robot start moving. Now the robot detects the office obstacle and uh, stop. The robot will stop unless the track is clear. Now we clear the uh, obstacle. The robot continue moving. Thank you everyone for watching our demo and don't forget to ask question in our comment section. So we have seen a successful demonstration of using a robot to find a railway defect. Though we are using a simulated defect as a QR code, which represents a defect, but in real time, we can actually use the command and control center and we have demonstrated this that a robotic system can be used to find and use in the railway inspection. We all know that railway is serving the, his, our civilization for a long period of time, but for a, the robotic inspection is a very harsh environment. Sometimes it's very sunny, it's rainy, it's snowy, and people have to use heavy machineries. It creates fatigue. But if we can use robot, it will help and increase the safety of the inspection system and also it will make it more efficient. We have demonstrated this today here in Rita at Cranfield University at a small scale, but we have also done a test in a real railway environment at Northampton Lamport Heritage Railway. We all know Heritage Railway is a real railway environment site. And after doing the successful demonstration, we have achieved technology readiness level seven. So this successful demonstration here and in the Northampton Heritage Railway shows that mobile manipulator can be used for inspection and repair tasks. Apart from the inspection, we have also demonstrated a re simulated repair task in Northampton Lamport Heritage Railway, where we have used multiple QR code for the robot to detect it and then actuate different action based on the findings on the a QR code. And it can deliver different types of tools to help the or help or assist the human in the repair process. Apart from this robot, we also have a bench trolley automation so that we have also used many types of sensor, GPS, LiDAR, camera. And on that trolley, we have used a ultrasonic sensor which can detect a real railway defect in a railway environment. So this demonstration will show how the human can use the robotic system for inspection and repair. And we, we do have faced some challenges demonstrating this. One is converting the off-track robot into a on-track. So this is a manual process. A experienced operator will uh, use a manual control system to hop on the robot onto the trolley and then it can run autonomously. So this is access system. We need access point in the railway. And then we also, that we all know the railway, railway environment is different than other environment. So there are some challenges coming into it. So if, Thank you for watching our demo and thank you for asking questions. We have got a question. What will happen if a train is coming? 
uh, so in railway inspection and repair maintenance or in the maintenance system we do have a term called possession so a possession is something who acquires the rail who owns the rail for that specific time so there is a standard which defines how long or what will be the gap between a person or any maintenance engineer is working on the rail and then it will be used for train again so for these rules also apply for the robot so once the robot is actually working on the train or working on the rail there will be no train running on the track and once it finish the work go away from the railway then the position will end and then the train operator can use the rail line again We have got another question. Uh, what do you like best about your job? Well, this is not about only me. I think this applies to all of my colleagues. In research, we see about some innovation. So here, the innovation is a very practical one, which is very impactful in terms of safety and using a robot in the railway environment. So railway is serving the in, this, in our transportation sector for a long time, but in terms of other sector, it's still lagging behind to use some of the modern robotic system. So we are proud that we have demonstrated how to use a robotic system in the railway environment. Thank you, I will hand it over to Eddie for further question. Thank you very much. So uh, we're live at uh, Cranfield University. Uh, we got a question, what do you like best about your job? Uh, that's very interesting and intriguing. Uh, it's quite a wonderful position to an opportunity to research at Cranfield University. Uh, doing something out of the norm, uh, developing robots that are capable of inspecting railways, uh, without human inputs, autonomously done, is high tech. I just like my colleague said, it's TRL seven standard. Uh, this is one of the advanced uh, railway robots you find in the UK and in the EU. Uh, furthermore, we've got something much more advanced, and uh, we have we have demonstrated that we have tested at Wixworth, uh, and it's demonstrated high capability of railway inspection at high speeds. Uh, we have sensing data which has been processed by some of the collaborators which you've had on the project. Uh, so it's the hands-on, it's the experience, it's the team and the coordination of uh, how every member does their part in delivering the objectives, in delivering the deliverables uh, the project is meant to do. Uh, and I'm quite delighted and uh, fascinated at what we have done and we've seen couple of feedbacks from the industry and our collaborators, how they've measured up uh, and access uh, the robots we have done at Cranfield University. So it's I'm quite delighted and I enjoyed very much doing it, thinking through the processes, solving the problems, working with the teams. Uh, and this is not just for me, it's for everyone that have been on this team. And uh, in this regards to our line manager, uh, Professor Andrew Starr, who has really put up this team together to deliver something of uh, real importance to the railway industry. Uh, and also uh, we have Isidro Cardenas, who is the second in charge of uh, the project management. Uh, we have uh, Christopher Castell, uh, we have uh, Mesume uh, on the team, we have Fei Hang, uh, we have Jian, uh, we have uh, uh, also myself and the speaker who has been uh, talking to you and uh, answering the questions all along. Uh, thank you very much. Keep your comments company. Is there any comment? No comment. Okay, thank you.
Hello and welcome to Cranfield University for demonstration of our railway robot. My name is Andrew Starr, I'm part of the Centre for Life Cycle Engineering and Management here at Cranfield and you find us outdoors at our railway innovation and test area which we call RITA for short. This is where we take our outdoor laboratory activities for partners like Network Rail and other railway customers. And we are going to show you this afternoon one of a series of vehicles that we've developed for testing the nature of railway inspection and repair. Uh, this is the second of a series of three that we've built so far. The other demonstrators have been done at scale and the latest one is at the Rail Live exhibition this week uh, which is the big industry show for the railway industry. Uh, before we start our demonstration I'd like to remind viewers to post their questions in the chat online and now I'm going to hand over to Mifta who's going to introduce what we're going to do in the demonstration today. Thank you everyone for joining UK RAS Robotic Lab Live. And we are from Cranfield University. And don't forget to ask a question in the comment section. So the purpose of today's demo is to show a robot in action doing an inspection in railway track. We all know that railway industry has served the civilization as a mass transportation system for more than 400 years. But the inspection system is not as advanced as other industries. So we thought, why not use robot to improve it? So here we have with our system RIRS. It's a railway inspection and robotic system. It has three parts. One is a trolley which has 10 inch railway wheel. Then we also have Warthog UGV, which is from Clear Path Robotics. And we also have a industrial manipulator, UR10E from Universal Robots. There are many sensors in the system. It has GPS for localization. And then we have three cameras, one environment camera for 360 degree view. We have a RGBD camera and also a monocular camera in front of the manipulator arm. So these purpose of that monocular camera is to look for a defect and do some actuation based on it. Then we see that the Warthog UGV has pneumatic wheels, which is not suitable for running on the railway track. So we have designed the trolley with the 10 inch railway wheel which can carry the robot on the railway but the power is transformed from the robot to the trolley wheel using belt and pulley mechanism what we are going to see today so we have prepared a demonstration demonstration will start from the base where the robot stands still then it will move its arm to a inspection pose once it reached to the inspection pose, the robot will start moving forward, looking for defect. Once it finds a defect, it will stop and it will read the QR code, do some action based on the message. So I am now handing over to Peyang and Jian to show you the demonstration. Thank you, Mifta. This is Feiyang. We are going to show the first round of the demonstration. We can see the robot is standby on the track and ready for running. From now on, the following sequence is fully autonomous. It's adjusting the robot arm to make sure the camera can see the sleepers and the rears. The robot starts moving automatically along the track. During the movement, the camera at the arm tip can capture and scanning the sleepers.
we can see the robot is approaching to the preset QR code. It found the QR code, so it stopped. Now it's turning the robot arm. Take some pictures for the QR code from different angles. The whole sequence is finished now. Hand over to Adi. He will introduce more details. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Ade, a researcher at Cranfield University. Uh, welcome to Real Live at Cranfield University. This is the Railway Innovation Test Area, RITA. Uh, my colleague have demonstrated how the robot uh, would work on the railway, uh, scanning QR codes. I'll be talking more about the sensor and the fusion and how it works with the robot. Uh, first of all, it's got a couple of sensors on board that are all controlled via a ROS1 component. Uh, ROS1 is Robot Operator System 1 that allows all the sensors and actuators to function uh, in parallel form. Uh, first of all, we have the LiDAR, which is uh, a device that has got beams of laser in 360 degrees. And this uh, allows uh, signals to be sent to the robot as it bounces back to the laser and picks signals with the environment. Uh, we've also the GPS, which is good for localization. This can be programmed uh, to sense geo position using the satellite coordinates and uh, up to accuracy of one to 10 meters. And uh, we can use this algorithm on the ROS1 computer to send a start and end position, which the robots will travel and return back to base. I'll be introducing my colleague, Ms. May, to, to give details more on this. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Masuma Rahimi. I'm a PhD student at Cranfield University at the Center of Life Cycle Engineering and Management. My research is about developing and implementing autonomous localization and navigation for the robotic inspection and repair system. The main component of this robot is Varta from ClearPath Company. This robot has a number of sensors, such as RTK GPS, 3D LiDAR, RGBD camera, and an IMU and EVIL odometer. As this robot is considered to operate on the railway track, localization is highly important. For localization, we mostly apply GPS sensor, but GPS is not working properly in railway environment because of different reasons, such as tunnels, dense vegetation, unavailability of the satellites, and many other reasons. So in this case, we try to fuse sensor for vehicle localization and apply trackside objects as references for improving vehicle positioning. Next, we will, I will show a couple of video in order to relate it to the on-track vehicle localization and navigation and off-track autonomous vehicle localization and navigation. This uh, test uh, is divided in two separate phases. The first phase, it is supposed that uh, we have GPS. The vehicle starts moving in order to reach to the goal location. And uh, in RVs, we can see that uh, localization and mapping are running through our tab map. And in RVs also, we can see a graph base uh, that are uh, generated from the R tab map. In the related term now, we can see that the GPS location has been uh, reached. In the second uh, scenario, suppose that we do not have any GPS. So this is the case that the vehicle, in order to, the vehicle need to uh, identify where and when to stop in order to identify the defect location. Here, the vehicle starts moving and, and use the track site object as a reference point in order to specify the environments around the defect location and also improve the vehicle's location. Here we can see that uh, by detecting the distance from the nearby uh, objects, uh, it starts publishing, and when it reaches to the defect location, it will the vehicle will stop. Thank you, Mesume, for that beautiful demonstration. Viewers should please 
comment and uh, ask questions and uh, we'll turn your question we'll answer them accordingly so furthermore uh, i was talking about a lidar earlier uh this is a device that picks signals from the environment and this uh in forms of laser beam bounces back to the lidar and senses from the ROS computer to tell the robot to stop or to continue uh the autonomous program uh, by the way this robot works autonomously so it's dangerous if there are humans on real track and there's no uh sensor that detects people around so that it stops and we, we want to reduce accident uh, it's very important that safety is important in developing an autonomous system and that's why we have the components on board using sensor fusion algorithm to process all the components and give uh, good feedback. So for the LIDAR, I'll be uh, inviting uh, another colleague of mine, Jian, who will give a demonstration of the LIDAR and how it works. And this is on one of our most advanced uh, real inspection vehicle here at Cranfield University. Over to you, Jian. Hello, everyone. It's Robert Life. I'm Jian Li. I work on the software development for this robot. This is our latest railway robots and automated bands trolley. Uh, it has similar feature as uh, the Warthog robot we talked about before. The main difference is it's railway, uh, railway ready. It has the wheels ready to go on the railway track without any conversion. Today, I'm going to show you an example of collision avoidance with the LiDAR sensor. Our LiDAR works by sending beams 360 degree to the surrounding uh, environment up to to 200 meters, uh, so it can have a clear view of what's around you. Today's demo, uh, the robot will travel to the end by detecting this obstacle, which is the fake policeman, and eventually slow down. Uh, it will continue uh, moving when the obstacle is cleared until it reach the end. Now the robot start moving. Now the robot detects the office obstacle and uh, stop. The robot will stop unless the track is clear. Now we clear the uh, obstacle. The robot continue moving. Hello, Robot Lab Live. Thank you very much for staying with us. Staying with us. Uh, it's still me, Jen, at Rita. Now I'm going to repeat this sequence, uh, uh, job sequence. Uh, but time, I will show the live view from the camera on the arm of the robot so you can see how the robot see. Now let's start the job. Job started, the robot is getting ready to his position, look for defect. Camera ready. Now I'll hand over to my colleague, Fian. Thank you, Jen. Uh, this time you can see the camera view during the test. It's worth to mention that today's autonomous test is just a simulation. In real environment, the QR code might be the track defeat. The robot's arm can be replaced by ultrasound testing equipment or any other maintenance kits. So the robot can do the inspection and the maintenance tasks autonomously. The robot is approaching to the preset QR code. We can see the robot has already detected the QR code. You can see the QR code in camera view. It's turning the robot arm to take some pictures for the QR code. The sequence is finished now. Thank you everyone for watching our demo 
and don't forget to answer don't forget to ask question in in the comment section so we have seen a successful demonstration of a autonomous robot finding a defect in the railway and then doing some mimic action based on the defect type we know that the uh, railway environment is very harsh for humans to work and sometimes they have to work for 24 by 7 in snow in rain if we can use robot to help them to assist them in their work we can improve the safety and also we can improve the efficiency of the work apart from the warthog robot we also have a bench trolley which we have automated and we used a ultrasonic sensor which can detect real railway defect in a real railway environment and for both of the cases we have demonstrated these in a real railway environment and northampton lamport railway so there we have used these same sequence of testing for a kilometer of track instead of this short track we have achieved the same results which shows we have we can achieve a TRL-7, Technology Readiness Level 7, using our system. So this command and control center can be implemented in other robots as well in the future, but we need more, a bit more research before we can deploy it in the real environment. And also, we can use uh, more machine learning to find the real defect instead of a QR code. So thank you everyone for watching our demo. I have got some questions. The first one is, since your mode of motion is transmitted from wheel to belt drive, there is some loss in efficiency in odometer. How are you compensating that error GPS? Yes, we do have encoder and all the sensors in the Warthog. We do not have anything in the trolley. And as the power transmission happened from the pneumatic tire to the trolley using friction in the contact roller. There is some loss, and this loss is not constant. So we are not going to calculate it, which will, as this is not constant and it's an uncertain thing. And for the GPS, in railway environment, there are almost 20 to 25 percent area where there is no GPS, such as tunnel and sometimes because of electrical overhead e line equipments we have a faraday cage which blocks the gps so we have some other compensation for this gps error we can use the lidar and also the vision system to localize and navigate along the railway track this is how we actually compensate the gps error using the vision system and the lidar thank you and we have got another question a very interesting one how much would it cost to implement a system like this well this is very difficult to answer but i can say you how much it cost in our case thanks to network rail for their donation or a generosity this robot, the Warthog and the UTN manipulator, is cost 150,000 pounds. And also, we have spent some money on the trolley. And also, we are working a team. So, this also uh, needs money. But in the real world, if we think about a mass implementation scenario, this will obviously come down a lot if we. Uh, want to deploy a lot of robot instead of just only one. Yeah, and I have another information. We have a new version, which is less than 20,000. So you can see the difference between changing from one robot to another. We have another question. What is the efficient top speed? Well, we are running the current system now at 0. Uh, five meter per second, which is on the track, but the Warthog UGV can run at a maximum speed of 18 kilometer per hour, which is very fast. But as we have a very short track, a 20 meter track, we don't want to run that fast. 
also if we run it too fast it will have too much vibration which can cause the arm to fail or which is not safe so we will run at a slow speed 0 0.5 meter per second thank you we have got another question and i will hand it over to andrew to answer this Hello again, and the um, question is, uh, why didn't we go for tandem uh, wheels for the ground and uh, on the track? Well, when we started the development with this vehicle on this trolley, it was at the peak of the pandemic, and we had just received the uh, Warthog vehicle, and there were quite a few things that we didn't know about it. And in particular, we didn't know about the design of the stub axles that the wheels run on and uh, we were nervous given the uh, the fact that the robot was uh, expensive and it didn't belong to us about uh, making major changes to the wheels and the axles we had a, a couple of uh, options uh, as you suggest you could uh, have uh, wheels in tandem so that uh, both uh, uh, rubber wheels and railway metal wheels uh, are, are probably, or we could have uh, simply put uh, replacement metal wheels on the same axles but those of course would put a moment into the stub axle and it would be acting at a, a longer uh, lever length than the current uh, uh, rubber tires so uh, given the, uh, the options there uh, the, the lack of information we decided that any changes we made it had to be completely reversible and uh, as we worked it through with our team we decided that uh, running the, uh, the trolley with uh, the the unmanned ground vehicle intact and a completely separate trolley would be the uh, the route of least potential damage to the vehicle in retrospect would i change that um, well, I think uh, we would probably, in retrospect, put uh, railway wheels straight on the, uh, on the robot. Another question for NIFTA. So our next question is, what's the most awesome experience you had with the robot? Um, I will say I will, it's very difficult to pick only one. We had a very wonderful two years experience with the robot. When we first got it, it had nothing. We have to drive it with a robot uh, remote controller. But then with time to time, with a great team, we have achieved, we have demonstrated some real life demonstration in real railway. This is a very good experience and Whenever you take out this big robot in the university, you cross the road, you will see so many spectators is asking so many questions. And this feels really good when answering the questions. Thank you. Thank you again for watching our demo. And this is the end of the day. We do not have any more demonstration, but still you can reach us through our uh, Twitter or in from our contacts in YouTube. Thank you. Thank you for watching our demo.